Today I'm representing La Asociación Crear, which is in Playa Samra. And what we do is a supplementary education program for the local children in two communities. And a year ago we started doing environmental assemblies within the schools. So instead of offering things in the Salon Comunal, anybody can come at any time, we started doing assemblies where we would go into the schools and do presentations on renewable versus non-renewable energy, as well as recycling. What I'm going to do today is I'm going to give a little intro and then do the presentation as I would for the children. This is something that I started doing in the United States with an organization in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. And then I've taken it and adapted it to life in Costa Rica in, in a nutshell. And this is something ideally that you can take back to the communities that you work in, tweak it a little because obviously not every system is the same, not every community actually has recycling, but it's just a concept, it's, hopefully it's a nice easy way to teach kids and adults alike about recycling. Good afternoon everyone, how are you today? Good. Good. Well, I'm going to talk to you a little bit about the earth, the environment that we live in, and I also want to really want to talk about garbage. Who knows anything about garbage? Smelly. Smelly, yep. There's a lot of it. There's a lot of it. There's different kinds. There's different kinds. Where does the garbage go? You burn it. You burn it? Is it always thrown in a garbage can? Sometimes it's on the ground. How does it get on the ground? Do dogs and cats put it on the ground? People do. So what can we do as people to prevent that? To help with that? Yeah, make sure first you can try to put it in its place, put garbage in its place, or you can work with your community to do a local cleanup. Get everyone together, be stewards, and help show everyone that you care about your communities and the neighborhoods you live in by picking up the garbage that we find. Now, I want you to think about what are some of the things that you throw away every day? An example, maybe something you threw away this morning. Anyone? Toilet paper. Tissue. Banana peel. Napkins. Anything else? Anyone ever been to McDonald's? I know, I know, it's okay. <laughs> Well, think about it. You go and you order a burger from McDonald's. That burger comes in a box, comes with napkins, comes with ketchup that comes in packages. You get a drink that comes with the, the cup, the lid, the straw, the wrapper. What else? French fries, maybe a dessert, maybe an apple pie. At the end, yeah, you eat your lunch and it's good. But you're stuck with what? A bag of trash. So. I'd like you all to think about, maybe close your eyes, think about what you do every day at home, the things you throw away, and think about how much garbage you throw away every day, and think about with your whole family, maybe you have four brothers and sisters, maybe it's just you and your aunt, maybe it's you and your grandpa, but think about every day that you take out the trash, how much trash do you take out? Just think about that. Maybe it's once a week, maybe it's twice a week. Okay, so then open your eyes, and can I get an example of how much trash we put out? Um, yeah. Tons of trash. Two grocery, bags a day. two grocery bags a day. And then what we want to do is think about that. If it's just your trash, okay. But then you got your neighbors and your aunts and your uncles, maybe in another city, maybe in another country. They're making trash too. So what we need to think about is where does this trash go? Oftentimes you put it out at the curb. I know in Samra the truck goes by every Wednesday and it takes the trash away. But where does that trash go? Does it say in the truck? It goes to a landfill. Maybe here it doesn't go to a landfill, or maybe in the United States it goes to a dump or a landfill. And when it goes there, what does it do? Huh? It stays there. It stays there. And then what? What happens next week? More trash. And the following week? More trash. And what happens to that landfill? Nothing. So we're creating, we're constantly creating mountains of trash. You throw it away, out of sight, out of mind, but it goes somewhere. So this is just a little example of a landfill. Now, as these landfills grow and grow, we start to run out of space. 
Do you all want a landfill in your backyard? No. Do you want a landfill in your school playground? No. Why not? It's gross, stinky, funky, and it's just going to keep growing. So what I want to do now, think about this landfill, and think about the things that we create and we throw away, and think about what we can do to not make so much trash. Does anyone have any ideas? I'm thinking about three little words that begin with the letter R. Reduce. Reduce. Anyone else? Another one? Reuse. Reuse. And another one? Recycle. Recycle. Now, these are really special words because sometimes it's a lot of top. Yeah, reduce, reuse, recycle. But we need to talk about what these words actually mean. So let's talk about the first one, which is? Reduce. So when we reduce, it means use less, make less garbage. Can I get two volunteers to come up and help show me an example of how we can reduce in everyday life? We're going to play that Jen is going to the store and she's going to buy a couple things. You are the clienta. Okay. But you can say it in English or Spanish. Okay. You're going to buy these two things. Okay. Okay? okay. And Anna works at this little store, and she is the cajera. You are the, the store clerk. <clears throat> All right. So you'll start it off. So let's see what Jenny does to reduce what she uses. Okay. Hola. How are you? Would you like anything else? Todo bien, por dicha. Solo quiero estas dos cositas. I just want these two things. Traía mil colones. ¿Quieres una bolsa? No, gracias. No, thank you. Tengo la canasta de mi bicicleta. Qué bueno. Okay, now, did Jen take a bag? No. Sometimes we get to the store and they just put our stuff in the bag. You can take it out if you don't need it. She had the basket on her bike. So that's a really easy way to reduce what you use is just don't use it. Yeah? Yeah, good idea. Okay. Good job, ladies. And we can think of a lot of other ways to reduce what you use. Reduce the amount of electricity, reduce the amount of water, or reduce the amount of garbage you make. So think, think before you make, before you use a product. But think before you go to McDonald's. So, <laughs> the next R word, what was that again? Reuse. Reuse. What does it mean to reuse? Use again, nice and simple. An example of something you reuse? Water bottles, shopping bags, pens, clothes, shoes. Instead of using plastic dishes, you can use washable dishes, ceramic dishes. Use them again and again and again. Cloth napkins instead of paper napkins, exactly. Can I get another two volunteers to help show us how to reuse? Or in Spanish, reutilizar? And let's see what they do when they reuse. Que caloy, más insoportable. Necesito a comprarme una botella de agua. Oh, it's so hot. I need to buy another bottle of water. Throw that down on the ground. Si, <laughs> si, sí, sí, el día está muy caliente. Por eso siempre ando mi botella de agua. Y por cierto, hay que llen llenaría de nuevo en, mi en lugar de tirarla en la basura. Wow, muy inteligente. Sí. Yes, it's really hot. And uh, so I always have my water bottle. And uh, I can fill it up with water instead of... No. Hey, uh -huh. yeah. yeah, instead of just buying another one. Good, good job, round of applause. And so I see that with a lot of people here today. You have your water bottles, and then even, even a plastic one like this you can fill up and use again. The only problem is after a while this might not be as durable. Always, side note, when I do use the signs, I have kids come up, hold up the signs. We usually repeat it three or four times. I, we didn't do that. <laughs> so it's reuse. And the last R word is recycle. Who knows what it means to recycle? Can someone tell me what it means to recycle? Recycling in simple terms is take something old and turn it into something new. So you know you can reuse and you know you can reduce and we're going to talk about recycling. But I want to think about 
when that doesn't happen and we throw it away, we bury it in the ground, we send it to a landfill, how long does it stay there? Okay? So we're going to go over a couple common things that we throw away every day, or that get thrown away every day, and we'll talk about how long they last. This is going to be garbage that's been inside a landfill. So who has an idea for paper, papers, days, months, years? 45,000 years, okay? One month. Okay, it's actually about two to five months. Okay, what about a banana peel? A banana peel. <laughs> Good. Seagulls could come and swoop down. Or if it's sitting there by itself, it might take about three to four weeks. Three to four weeks. What about a chip bag? Like a bag of uh, picarones or chips? So a bag of chips, a wrapper? 40,000 years. So now this, because this is a different kind of plastic, and at least what I found with it, it's a lot thinner. They said around 20 to 30 years. So it's still a long time, think about that. Every bag of chip, 20 years later. What about a magazine? to 13 <laughs> and he was very disappointed because those last around 500 years for about 500 years I think this breaks down if it gets rusty it falls apart of the little pieces like the can itself isn't there in 500 years yeah okay so Again, this is generally geared towards children, not scientists. And <laughs> so it's not going to be perfect, and it's not going to be for everything, just putting that out there. But he made a good question. What does a can actually decompose into? Hard to say, but when we talk about this, it's talking about breaking down to basically when you don't recognize, you don't see the can anymore. You don't see these items anymore. They've kind of mushed into something else. There's something else. Well, let's think, a banana? It's going to re be reabsorbed. That's why landfills have drainage, because landfills leak out toxic chemicals. Huh? Okay. How about tennis shoe? Two hundred. Shoe. 175. I have about 200 years. Yeah. You gotta think about all of these little metal pieces, there's rubber pieces, there's all kinds of stuff on, on a pair of shoes. What about a six pack ring? 150. 150. Six pack ring, 50 years? Anyone else? Never? Huh? 50? Around 450 to 500 years. Yeah, that's why you got to make sure you cut them, or maybe you don't buy things in plastic rings. Or you can cut it so animals don't get stuck in them. What about a diaper, a disposable diaper? Babies use them all the time, probably about seven a day. Huh? A few years? Two hundred years. I have 550 years. Okay, and these last ones, these tricky ones, styrofoam, we see it everywhere. Never. Yep, million plus, basically never in our lifetime, kids' lifetime, John. Babies, 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 babies. What about a plastic bottle? 350? Decades? Again, that's up into the millions. They just don't really know when that will go away. And a bottle, a, a glass bottle, a glass jar, glass. Huh? Million? They actually say never. Yeah, never. I mean, okay, sure, if you break it and smash it into a thousand pieces, but if that little bottle gets buried in, nice and intact, it'll stay there for 
Long, 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 long time. Okay, so think about this. We throw all these things away, and they go to that landfill, and they're going to stay in that landfill for a long, 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 long time. Okay? So we got that problem. So what I want to talk about is what we can recycle and how we can recycle it. Because a lot of times, it's a little unclear of what is actually recyclable. Can someone give me some examples of the paper that we can recycle? Paper. Newspaper. Recyclable. Anything else? Old notebooks. Magazines. So as I said in the beginning, there's going to be a lot of different rules. I know within even U.S. cities, what a recycling company will take, what a municipality will take, varies. So what I want to do today is talk about how you, what, in general, what you can recycle. What can citizens be recycled? Exactly. Okay, exactly. Thanks, Dan. Exactly. So what could be recycled if the program had the capacity to recycle? Because recycling is turning something old into something new. So we got loose leaf paper. Any other kind of paper out there? Paper cups. Paper, paper cups. Napkins. Okay. So that's where we're going to run into. We got. This is going to be, there's cardboard, which is uh, like what a cardboard box, a shoe box comes in, or there's paperboard, which is cereal boxes, recyclable. Now paper we can't recycle is going to be an old pizza box because it's greasy with food. We also can't recycle napkins because the type of paper that it is is very weak. It would never last in the recycling process. So paper, these types of paper in general, whether it's post-consumer or pre-consumer, um, you can recycle paper up to seven times. They say that within the, pro the recycling process, if it's broken down, broken up into bits, mixed with water, that original piece of paper after seven cycles would not really be there. That's why a napkin isn't strong enough to withhold the, the recycling process. And generally, a napkin is dirty with filthy food, or food, or whatever gets put in a napkin. And same with a pizza box, because of the grease that's absorbed into the paper, isn't recyclable. For now, I just heard um, Kimberly Clark, the big, a huge paper company, is investigating how to reuse um, hand towels from bathrooms. And now Tetra Pak is recyclable as well. It's kind of a special type of paper that has almost like a waxy coating on it. This can be recycled and reused. I guess we, we, we'll call it a type of paper. Recyclable. You can also reuse it and make some really cool art projects out of them. Okay, the other one is, oh, I want to talk about plastic. There's a lot of different types of plastic. Does anybody have any idea of what plastics we can recycle? How can we tell the difference between plastics? They have a little number on the bottom. And what that number is always generally found within a triangle. Now, the plastics go from plastic one to plastic seven. Typically, what are recycled most are plastic number one and number two. Why? Because they're the most durable plastics. The same with paper. These kind of plastics just aren't strong enough to last through the recycling process. Oftentimes, what we tell kids is if you don't see a number on it, it's most likely not a one or two and most likely not recyclable. Every day, every year, more plastics are being added to this list as the demand increases. Um, I think, but this is going to depend on where you're located. Chicago is probably different from Milwaukee, which is probably different from New York City. Some people say, I've never even heard of these plastic numbers. So I'm putting this out there for you. If you'd like to follow the recycling education, you might want to do a little investigation on your own to know what, what they recycle. So there's a lot of different types of plastics. The nicest thing about these, maybe you don't use them, or maybe like we did here at the conference, wash them and use them again. A sandwich bag, wash it and use it again. There's no harm in that. And even these plastic chip bags, yeah, they're going to last a long, long time to decompose. Or I've seen in some places people make them into cool art projects. They use them for weaving, and they make recyclable, recycle-made wallets. A plastic bottle doesn't always have to turn into a plastic bottle. It might become a fleece. It might become a backpack. It might become a lot of different things. So recycling gives things a new opportunity, a new life, if you will. So we want, a plastic, we want to recycle, generally, plastics one and two, the hardiest plastics. What else have I not mentioned? Glass. 
Now glass is cool. Actually, I don't think, oh yeah, I do have a little baby glass jar. Now glass comes in all shapes and sizes. You have clear glass, brown glass, green glass, glass jars, glass bottles. All this is recyclable. Again, depending on where you're located, some places will take window planes, but generally not in the municipality pickup. You might have to take that to a Home Depot type store or a co-op to drop off that kind of glass. Or something like a light bulb. That you shouldn't throw in with your recyclables from, from household trash. So depending on what's available to you, you can take that, make that conscious decision, maybe save your light bulbs and take them to the place where they need to go once you have enough. Okay, so pretty much gla glass, we're looking at jars and bottles, all colors. And then metal. Who knows what kind of metal this is? Aluminum, any idea what this might be? It's usually between tin or steel. Recyclable, if it comes in a can or it comes in a can like this, it's recyclable. So we can recycle paper, plastic, metal, and glass. One type of metal we can't recycle, aluminum foil. Again, it's just not strong enough, probably has food in it. It's just not strong enough to you to handle the recycling process. They say that paper and plastic have about seven lives to be recycled, whereas glass and metal can be recycled indefinitely. Okay? So why not recycle instead of throwing it into a landfill? Now, this is a point in the presentation where I generally break the group if it's a group of younger kids. We'll, we'll go over what I'm going to do now. But if it's a group of older kids, I usually have two teams that get set up and we do a recycling relay where they have to grab into the bag and then run to a bin, whether it's trash or whether it's recyclable. So it's really fun because they're getting up, they're moving, and they have to decide, is it recyclable, is it garbage, what did I just learn? But it generally works for fourth grade and up. What we do with the younger kids is basuradogia, or garbage. into the earth once again. And then the last thing that we do, we go back to the landfill. So after we've learned everything about what we can recycle, what we can't recycle, what can we reduce, reuse, th is there anything on here that shouldn't be in the landfill? Very good. Now, in real life, we can't actually go to a landfill and say, hey, give me that back, I want to recycle it. But it's just an option. This is just to show you that when we don't send things to the landfill, we reduce, we leave more space, and you know we don't uh, fill them up as fast because that's the problem. Landfills are growing as the population grows, and we're going to run out of space for these landfills. So then we would go over everything on here. This maybe we reduce what we use, or we use something like this wrapper, and then the little can. And then it's a good a day job well done, everybody. Give yourselves a round of applause. Yay.